Hello, my PBC family and friends. Pastor Brian here with another Quick Bite, Living the Word. Today, as we continue looking at the attributes which are God, uh, the attributes of our God, I want to go to 1 John chapter 2, uh, verse 1. And the, we're looking only through the book of 1 John here. So uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. I want to read verses 1 and 2 together. So let's just read those, and we'll come back and talk about these things. And, I, and then I have an illustration that I like to share whenever I think about these passages. So 1 John chapter 2 says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man have a sin, we have an advocate with the Father, <clears throat> Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So you can see where we're going to go with this. What are the attributes of God in this? What are his attributes? Well, first of all, the attribute we run into, first of all, is advocate. He is our advocate, literally meaning our lawyer, the one who would argue for us in court, if I can put it to you that way. The one who steps in and is the voice for us. We don't even have to speak up for ourselves. He speaks up for us. And then, uh, and then it goes on and says he's the propitiation for our sins. He's the propitiation meaning he's the payment for our sins. He has paid it in full. He has paid the cost. And so this is how I like to look at this case. So the illustration I always use whenever I think about this um, is very simple. Imagine that you decided you wanted to sue me. I was, did, had done something wrong to you, and you decided you wanted to sue me in a court of law. So we go into that court of law, and I'm standing there at, at, at the defense table, and you're standing over there at the accuser's table, and uh, you have your lawyer, and I don't have a lawyer to represent me. So I'm sitting there, and as the court case starts, all of a sudden walks in the judge and sits down on the bench. Now, how confident would you be to find out that that judge was my father? You wouldn't be very confident at all, would you? You'd be going, wait a minute here, this is tainted, this is, this is sideways, this is, I, there, th this is not right. But what you don't know about my father is my father is 100% just, he's righteous, he's going to judge rightly. So then you're, we're sitting there, and, and now the arguments are to begin. Still, I have no lawyer. All of a sudden, my father, if I can put it to you this way, my father, at, for a moment, sits on the bench, but then he also takes off that robe and comes down and stands before and with me and starts to argue his points, starts to defend me. He is my advocate now at this moment as well. So now he's not only the judge, but he's also my lawyer. This is such a beautiful moment for me, isn't it? And a kind of a terrifying moment for you. But not so much because, remember, my father is a righteous judge. So we make our arguments. We make our cases. At the end of my case, uh, my, 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 my father takes uh, off the advocate role for a moment, steps back up into that judge role, puts the robe back on, sits down, looks over at me and says, guilty as charged. Wait, what? My dad just found me guilty. This isn't right. And you now are filled with relief because he has held up the law. He has held up the righteousness that is to be held up. He says, you need to make the payment. You owe them, Brian, so now pay them. And after he makes that judgment, slams down the gavel, he again stands up, takes off his robe, steps off of the bench, and comes down before and next to me, before the bench, and stands next to me and says, but I will pay that price. I will pay the full price of what you owe. Because I am not only your advocate, I am your perpetuation. So now this judge, this righteous judge, who found me guilty, not only stands and argues on my, on my behalf, but now stands before that same bench, before himself, where he just found me guilty and says, I will do the time. I will do whatever it is. I'll make the payment. Because he is mine. That is our Father. That is our God. That's how much he loves us. It says there that we, that my children, I write unto you that you sin not. We shouldn't be trying to sin, but when we sin, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the, but also for the sins of the whole world. But personally, my God stands before me, next to me, and before me, finds me guilty, but then what? Pays the payment. How beautiful is that? Think about that for a moment. 
You know we have an accuser who goes daily before the throne of God to accuse us of the things we've done wrong. And probably, unfortunately, a lot of the accusations are true. But every time he shows up, our God steps down from that throne, from the right hand of the throne on high, stands before the judge and says, I paid that price. He is free. He is innocent. Think about that. Oh, what a beautiful thing. The attribute of our God is very simple. He's our redeemer. He's a propitiation for our sins. But in addition to that, he's also our advocate. He's the one who's going to stand for us and make the payment. So even though sometimes we may feel guilty over the things we've done in the past, our guilt does not need to define us. I love this quote. It says, our guilt can remind us, but it should not define us. In other words, whenever you feel guilty about what you've done, it should remind you of the greatness of our God and our Redeemer. It should not define you. Your definition is that you have been redeemed. If you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you now stand innocent in the eyes of the court because our advocate and propitiation stands with us. I hope this encourages you today. I love you. We love you. God loves you. And God's got this.